Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Capes and Lunatics. I am Phil. No Charlie, no Lilith, but Will is here, who you know. Hey, everyone. <laughs> because we have another very special guest, Mr. Jeremy Adams. Hello, sir. Hello. I, I love that there's a Mr. in there. Just I, if I didn't feel old enough. <laughs> hey, we're all we're all old men here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I know I wanted to. Well, both Will and I, I mean, we do a Green Lantern podcast. So, of course, we wanted to see what information we could get out of you about the upcoming Green Lantern series. <laughs> But I also wanted to thank you for the Flash series. I've been reading your Flash series. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Every thank issue. You. I was about to say every month, but right now it's every, uh, what, every two weeks. For, yeah. Uh, the one minute war, which yeah. is very good. Well, right. thank and, you. And I'm... I kind of figured I did my homework. I see you have two children because just reading the Wally West family, I'm like, <laughs> this man has children. Man. <laughs> Ripped from the headlines. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, I it's it's weird that it's coming to an end in my mind Mm -hmm. um because you know as i know as everybody knows i was like i will i will ride this thing into the ground you know (laughs) like um and i had plenty of other stories and things i wanted to do but that you know that's them's the breaks they ain't my toys you know Um, but i had so much fun i was i'm kind of reflecting on the run and and the different things that i i i really got away with uh so much murder you know, there, there, was, there was there was a byproduct of Warner Brothers going through so many weird hiccups and changes that allowed me, I think, a to stay on as long as I was able, and also to just be able to experiment. Um, because up until about two years ago, I I had never written a comic, and and it, it was something I've always wanted to do. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, my father drew comic books, and so that was always. Uh, I mean, a few of them, not like a lot, but that was always a safe place for him and I to communicate. So it was always something I desperately wanted to be involved in. And it's funny how I came about it the exact opposite way everybody else wants to go about their career in writing, you know, (laughs) and uh, and I was so, so I remember after the meeting with Dan Didio, where he got a bunch of animation writer names and we're in a room and he's talking about 5G and and we leave. And I'm just high as a kite. Like, I, I really am just like, oh, my gosh, this is it. I've been trying to write a comic for ages, and they're going to let me. This is insane. And I remember walking into a bar where a couple of my friends are, and they were really like, I don't know, should we do this? And I was like, if someone asks you if you're a god, you say <laughs> yes. You know, like, I was like, are you insane? Of course we're going to do this. And then it was like, and then. Dan left and and I was like, oh no, this is my chance, you know. <laughs> and then uh and then I got to do a couple of the future state backups mm-hmm. because that 5G kind of morphed into future yes. state. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly Mike Cotton, who was the editor at the time, called me up. It's like, hey, do you want to? I found out I was not the first choice, you know, and it was like, hey, do you want to do, do the flash? And are you got any ideas for the flash? I'm like, do I got ideas? <laughs> Buddy, I'm a man of a certain age. I've got a lot of ideas about comic books, you know. And then he was like, "Ah, right, you can have, you can do the Flash." It was just so blasé. I was like, "All right." And then and then just really getting to go kind of cuckoo bananas a little bit, and and having so much fun doing it, and working with incredible artists. And I just and, and this is the thing: like Flash wasn't it wasn't the book that I was I grew up with. Like I read some of it, but I was reading, you know, X-Men, Hulk, Captain America, Daredevil. I was reading Batman, Detective Comics, a lot of Young Justice, a lot of Nightwing, Robin, you know, uh, the Chuck Dixon editorial office was yeah. super cool to me. The Cassandra came Batman, the, you know, the, all the Birds of Prey, everything by Gail Simone. Like I was, I was deep into all of that stuff and Flash was there and I read some of it. I read some Mark Wade. And, um, and I've read, you know, if you're a comic fan, you just read whatever's in front of you. And I've read a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so when I got the job, it was like, oh man, there's almost 800 issues of continuity. I got to somehow figure out, you know, and really <laughs> dig deep in. And I'm so grateful to, uh, you know, Marvel in, or, uh, you know, DC infinite is great to catch um, up. Wikipedia is a great, to, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> fans have been unbelievably cool and making you know like listen one of the only reasons harley came back into the book 
was because fans were just like, you know, I, I, I where's Harley, you know, in a way. <laughs> and I, by the way, I'm rambling. So when you tell me, Oh, hey, no, no, <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, the people are here to hear you, not us. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so, so one of the things they, that obviously the way I designed how I was going to write the book was that opening arc was really about me getting used to Wally's voice and figuring out who Wally was for me to write him. And then I kind of expanded it in terms of, well, I want to bring in the kids and then I want to bring in Linda and just kind of expand those roles or expand them in terms of it's me building it out and making it a bigger book in terms of the family orientation of it. And then bringing in Barry a little more, bringing in Jay a little more and bringing in Max and Liberty. And then, and then it, it's all kind of like gotten bigger and bigger and bi bigger so that by the time we get to one minute war, we're all, we're all on the same page. And with Harley, it was like, Oh, he's a critical member of this family in a way. Mm -hmm. And, and everybody's missed him for a long time. That's the other thing about writing this book. That's been so much fun. is like, no one's, kind of like batting an eye when I'm like, uh, hey, can we bring Eclipso in here and maybe Justice League Dark? Like, I, you know, obviously I was just throwing characters in like, hey, uh, what's anybody doing with Power Girl right now? You know, like, <laughs> no, one was, no one was stopping me with like Dr. Fate or whatever. And I'm like, this is great. Because when I was a kid and I picked up a book and there was multiple characters and I'm like, oh, this is amazing. You know, so that, that's, that's kind of, and I felt like, I, you know, maybe this was just the outside looking in, but I felt like, it would help the cohesiveness of the DC universe a little bit yeah. to have those characters interact and they're, Hey, we're all part of one world. We're all, we're all doing these things at the same time. And uh, because dark crisis was like, it was dark crisis in the flash, like dark crisis spinoff books in the flash, but it wasn't really happening in some other books. And so when they said, when I was talking to Josh and he's like, you can use whoever you want. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> But I also tied it into like Jay bullying, you know, Roy about his hat and, you know, uh, <laughs> Power Girl learning the thunderclap from, you know, or Jay learning the thunderclap from Power Girl and stuff like that. Stupid stuff that I'm just having, like, you know. And then I'm like, well, yeah, I'm going to put Claire and the Witch Boy in there because, you know, uh, our, you know, Gregory Wolf is a Lord of Order. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, you, and if you're new to comics, you're like, what's happening? Like, I don't even know what's happening, you know? But if you've been reading as long as we have, you're like, oh, Lords of Order. Yeah, yeah that's a thing. Uh, I was, was going to say, the biggest compliment, I've been reading Wally West since the early 90s, and yes, good job. It fits right in. I'm, <laughs> I'm never like, oh, hey, what's this guy doing? No, it's it, it's right in with everything. And I know well, I'm, I'm a bit of a continuity whore in a lot of ways. Like, yes. Like, like I'm that guy that, that, if it doesn't make sense, I, I kind of want it to make sense. Yes. And uh, that was kind of some of my plans uh, for later was I wanted to, I wanted to fix a lot of things. <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> even, even by the way, like tiny things, like things that no one else cares about, but I'm sitting there going like, oh, that just bothers me. And mistakes that were made in, in, in publishing. Like it was like, oh, this was colored wrong. I'm like, we should fix that in continuity. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nice and, and again I, I i'm sad to see you go too. 800 is going to be your last issue but i see so you get you got the work with you're going to get to work with mark wade yeah so it was funny like i don't know it was like last year i said listen you know issue 800 is going to come up quicker than we think when i started <laughs> my my goal was to make it to 800 and i'm i'm so yeah. glad i did and then, of course, my brain started moving past 800. But, <laughs> but, but for issue 800, I was I really I really wanted to be a celebration of the Flash, and I really wanted um, to bring in all those guys that have made such a big. You know, it's not too totally altruistic, by the way. It's yeah. like <laughs> I want you know I I've now worked with Jeff, and I know him, and I really like him, and so you know, getting Jeff on board and getting Josh Josh is up for it, and Josh is awesome yeah. too. And then I found out Mark is like a neighbor of mine. He's, he lives a couple blocks away. And the way I met Mark was he was doing a signing at a, a comic book store down the shop. And it was like a Saturday. And I was just scrolling through Twitter. And I see this thing like, <laughs> come by, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the, and uh, meet Mark Wade. And I was like, holy crap. I like grabbed my keys. And like, I don't even know if I said bye to my family. And I was like, I'll see you later. You know, and I'm driving. 
<laughs> and I get there and I kind of go, hi, Mr. Wick. You know, I'm Chris Farley. <laughs> and that SNL sketch, you know, like, hey, Mr. Wick. Uh, my name is Jeremy. I'm a big fan. And he was like, oh, my gosh, I love what you're doing in The Flash. And I was like, you do? You know, <laughs> and, and so then then we had lunch and we've had lunch a couple of times. And su- what a super cool guy. Super cool guy. And so um, because I feel like Mark, especially, I feel like he's contributed. I don't know if it's the most, but probably the most to the Flash universe. Um, speed force, all sorts of, oh, you yeah. know, familial things. And, um, <laughs> and so, and he's a veteran and I'm a newbie. And so getting able to have lunch with him and hear any war stories or any ideas and, and, and like, you know, suggestions or whatever is amazing. So all that being said, I was like, oh man, wouldn't it be great to do an 800 with all those guys on board? And, um, mm. and at first there was a little resistance to it, I think. I don't know why, but I was like, no, you got, we got to do this, <laughs> you know? And then, <laughs> and then it was like, yeah, well, of course we're doing this. Of course we thought of this idea. I was like, well, well, I don't care. I don't care. Like, let's do it. <laughs> we want a big issue 800 with, with all these amazing flash riders. Uh, <laughs> But he also, I mean, he must love you because I know I've talked to him before and I think he was just under the impression a lot of fans or some of the like people at DC didn't like like Wally's family and like you're taking such a good care of them. I mean, he must <laughs> love, you know. Yeah, I, it's a weird, when I first started, I always said that, you know, Wally was a pinata and I was like, I promise you I won't hit the pinata. <laughs> like, you know, as long as, <laughs> as long as I'm writing like he's going to be okay. And that was kind of the promise that I made up front. And it was very specific because I, how do I, mean, how do you say this? It's a weird thing because it's there. We're dealing with fictional characters, obviously. Yeah. And we're, mm-hmm. but, but the way that I think of heroes are their heroes. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually, when I come to a comic book, a lot of times, especially as a kid, it's like, I wanted, I wanted to read about heroes. That's not to say that there's not a place for anything edgy or whatever, I just feel mm-hmm. like there's a, there's a lot of that, and so I wanted to do something a little different, and I wanted to do something that was going to be, uh, very like my daughters could read this book. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's very like there's action and adventure and stakes, but there's also it's kind of family oriented, and and I really wanted to move Wally into this kind of like weird, incredible, fantastic, foray land where it was like, oh, look at this family that can do all these things and. And to me, are maybe the most powerful beings in the universe. You know, and I've touched on it a couple of times in the book, but Wally, especially because, like I said, because I'm a continuity whore and I've seen him come back from non existence and ride Metron's chair and help re knit <laughs> the universe together. I'm like, man, that guy knows some stuff, you know, and, and that's his ultimate empathy. Um, and then his love is, is grounding with his wife and kids. So, you know, my 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 big goal was to have fun, but also to leave it where I've added more toys to the toy box and that, you know, people that love the Flash uh, love them more and they love Wally more and they love and they love that. And and kind of, you know, the, the undercurrent is that is like, you know, solidify that you can't kill them again. <laughs> you know, <I> mean, <laughs> you know, there's a little of that, right? Like there's an undercurrent of like, like uh, you know, we did all this stuff, and if you kill him, whatever happens to you is on you. You know. Yeah, he's kind of up there in like Nightwing territory, where right. like it's like you can't touch him, and you know, right. he's of, uh, as popular, if not more, than the guy who came before him. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, listen, I've had I've had such a blast, and and uh, I mean, you know, if you're a comic fan, it's like I've been able to add characters like villains and heroes and intergalactic space wrestlers you know like i just been <laughs> able to like add and i i didn't want to do like here's a thousand i wanted to do them like every so often add a character and and that's mm-hmm. awesome i got to add a character to the dc comics like <laughs> i'll never see money from it but i love that <laughs> <laughs> And I know a lot of people say, like, I know, like, you've written for TV shows and yep. animated series and movies. People say, like, comics is like writing a comic is like its own animal. It's so completely yeah. different than any other writing for anything else. Yeah, it is. Um, it's not. It. It's more close in my mind. Closely resembles animation than uh, live action that does. Is. So when I went was I when I was on Supernatural. So I would, uh, you know, for people that don't know, I 
wrote primarily animation for years. Uh, first issue, first thing being Green Lantern the animated series. That's my first credit. And Bruce Tim was an executive producer on that. And um, Jim Jim Krieg was the showrunner. Giancarlo Volpe, like some incredible people, were involved in that. And that that was my first foray into animation. It was spectacular. A great series, as we were just talking about. It yeah. was something that um, you know it was it was concurrent with Young Justice. Um, the the way that Jim and those guys and Ernie Altbacker and all those guys put that together was so very clever. And Bruce Tim, you know, just curated that as well. I mean, it was just, it was a thrill to be a part of because I still think it holds up and I still think it's going to hold up. I think it's just going to increase in, you know, valuation as people keep like discovering it in a way. Mm -hmm. I think people were turned off by the CGI back in the day. I think it was like one of the first times that kind of like style. It was like, oh, it was like the Bruce Tim style, but it was done like this. And people were a little like put up, but it's such a mature almost uh, retelling of Green Lantern. And and mm -hmm. and they flipped some things on the head, whatever. Anyways, mm -hmm. animation um, is super collaborative. And when you write animation, or at least when I write animation, I look at it as kind of like an outline for the artists, the storyboard guys, and the supervising producer, and the diff different people that come after it. So there's a lot of directing on the page. Sometimes the artists use the directing, sometimes they don't, but it doesn't matter. Like you have to kind of direct. So each page is a little longer than it would be in live action. And I would, I would oftentimes just choreograph total fight scenes and like, okay, the camera's going to do this. And you would write certain things depending on who you're working for. But generally that's how, that's been my, my experience. And then I go over to Supernatural and I'm doing an episode where uh, there's a huge fight scene and I choreographed the entire fight scene on the page. And the executive producer's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> what do you mean? And he's like, we got a guy for that. Like, don't, don't write that. Just write fight scenes. I was like, uh, okay. You know, like, I don't know. And so, <laughs> Comic books are much more, in my mind, like animation Animation, in a way, because you're definitely directing, you know, not that you, not that I have any right to be directing, you know, like I, I can barely dress myself. So, so I'll put panels in it and I'll, I'll really try to give the description of what I want. And when I, when you find an artist that gets it gets what your language you're talking it, it's mm -hmm. a really great thing i think that's why i i really enjoy working with fernando pastoran so much because he pluses everything i do he really understands kind of how i'm envisioning it but like in green lantern it's zermanico and zermanico will say uh i see what you're doing here i think we can do it a better way and i'm like you are the artist and you're <laughs> better than I. And this is a visual medium. And mm -hmm. I want the artist, some of my goal is some, sometimes I get a little wordy and stuff, but most of my goal is like, I want that artist not only to be elevated and feel beloved, but like, and have ownership. But I also uh, want him or her to feel, uh, excited about drawing it excited about what they're drawing instead of being like oh here's another talking scene or whatever you know <laughs> it's like i want them to be excited about uh oh jeremy put in a you know 90 foot lizard monster with like you know twinkies for fingers or whatever it's like <laughs> you know i want to be like this is crazy i'm gonna go with it you know and and i've had moments like that uh amon k on the dark crisis tie-in it's like I, when i was writing the um the uh the wasteland berry the mad max berry mm. and he started sending back pictures of the cars and you could tell he was having so much fun with the cars. <laughs> i was like this is awesome and it was just so awesome and so it's like well we got to make sure we can do some more cars you know <laughs> um but i really i'm not perfect at it and i still feel like i have so much i'm learning on flashpoint beyond jeff had very particular he has a very particular way that he writes in a very particular way that he wants to to do things in terms of like uh, page turns and, and stuff like that that mm -hmm. i'm like oh my gosh like how am i not of course i'm going to listen to him and of course i'm going to take that and try to you know as my mom say says uh, chew the hay and spit out the sticks you know it's like <laughs> takes what works and then leave the rest and um 
And that's what I've been trying to do. So I, I mean, it's a weird, it's a weird thing because with, with flash, you know, we didn't get, we didn't start out with a number one. It kind of just mm-hmm. appeared and, and then word of mouth has been so great and fans have been so great. And <clears throat> it's been fun to see people kind of find it and rediscover it. And there's still people that don't know Wally is, is the flash. Like they have no idea. And, mm-hmm. uh, and it's been, it's, it feels like a groundswell in a way. And so when we started selling out one minute war stuff, I was just like, I was over the moon <clears throat> and, uh, you know, there's, it sucks to leave. Like I, I, I'm so sad about it, but when you're leaving with that much love, you can't, you can't really be bitter or anything. You're yeah. just like, mm-hmm. oh man, this is incredible. Yeah, no. Cause I mean, the story has been good. Your artists have, you know, the art's yeah. been good on every issue covers everything. Uh, yeah. I think that's the only thing it's like, it's, there's good word of mouth. I mean, especially it probably helps that there's a flash TV show, a flash <laughs> movie come in, but it's yeah. very and all of those. So it's yeah. like, yeah, you gotta get the word out about Wally. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's always an interesting thing. Anytime you deal with the IP of any sort, it's kind of a weird, uh, yeah. it's a weird animal. I mean, I work for Lego and obviously Warner Brothers a lot, and and sometimes there can be mandates that come down on, um, you know, covers and stuff like. That. When when I was doing Lego superhero stuff, we are our, our Lego superhero stuff. So I had done this uh, bat or this Flash animated Lego movie. And then I did Aquaman animated Lego movie and a Shazam animated Lego movie and like another <laughs> Batman animated Lego. But those were all supposed to come out like concurrently with uh, the Flash movie yeah. and the Shazam <laughs> movie and the Aquaman movie. And then immediately the live action stuff was so got so out of whack mm-hmm. with what uh, they just started releasing them. And they're they're still really fun, <laughs> you know, peculiar little. There, there's one joke that I wish I, I'm so sad we didn't get in the Flash uh lego flash one which was a uh, reverse flash who is played by uh dwight schultz uh murdoch from uh, uh the a-team and, and, and next yeah, generation that's exactly yeah yeah and um and he's reverse flash and uh he walls in oh I, the the joke was that the justice league says we have to quit because the reverse flash yeah. nobody knows he's bad and the reverse flash knows he's, and so what we had to cut out was that they get a job at the mall of justice and and they and, and my favorite part was like batman had a smoothie stand and this kid like gets a drink and she's like this is disgusting and he's like of course it's disgusting it has just the, it has all the vitamins and minerals you need you know with none of the like it was just like this like practical you know drink that tastes horrible but of course it's good for you so funny uh all right we're okay we're 20 some minutes in Sorry. Will, i will, no i know will was chomping at the bit to, to, <laughs> to ask some green laner questions so go ahead yeah, will he has a well, ring well uh, yeah i do have a ring back there uh, we uh we were talking a little bit about green laner in the animated series and you know i had mentioned that i had kind of my my sons i'm old i'm really old and my, my sons have, were were a little too old for the series when it came out we did go see the movie together and were extraordinarily disappointed uh, in the movie. <laughs> but uh, just like, you know, during the pandemic, I'm like, you know, I I, may, I remember watching like the first episode or something. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's put this on. And it stands up so well. I mean, yeah. and it's just such a gorgeous series that, you know, I'm like, it what who cares if it's selling action figures? Why yeah. is this not still on? Yeah. Right? You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean that, and that was the thing. It was like mm-hmm. the live action movies did, did so poorly that um, mm-hmm. you know they they dumped the series because like yeah, was... but we got these action figures, and they're like yeah, we've got a bunch of landfills with Ryan Reynolds' face <laughs> on. It, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's like because the marketing guys and toy guys they don't they don't know the difference. They're like that says Green Lantern, and that says Green Lantern. Like it's the same yeah. thing. You know, it's too bad. Yeah, I I I, I love the animated series just it's so great and i'm glad i got to come back to it and watch it and i'm i I talk my sons are 27 now so um you know we'll even talk about you had those kids like illegally what's up (laughs) i'm I'm 51 dude oh Oh, bro come on (laughs) come on you don't look good you put that pearl cream on your face what's happening (laughs) i'm losing my hair which is why (laughs) why do you think i got a cap on yeah so you know, we'll talk about the series now and 
it's it's really great to just you know they've come you know they're 20 somethings now they're like yeah this is awesome and you know i'm like i'm old and i'm like yeah it is awesome let's, yeah. let's talk about it because it's really cool let's watch it you know and, yeah jim jim and those guys like it's so good and they would have they would find so much glee in trying to figure out how to turn the knife you know and, and really <laughs> And I think that's what's so fun about that series in particular is you're 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 watching the show, and mm -hmm. and you're thinking, oh, maybe this like it looks like it's going to be a kid show, yeah. And then there's these like, I mean, the Razor Aya romance like yep. subplot is so <laughs> intense, and then it just it just it gets so dark, and you're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, and uh, and it's just really clever, 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 clever show. Mm -hmm. I really, really loved it. Yeah, and you did. Uh, so it was a couple episodes in the second half of the yeah. run. Yeah, they they. <laughs> Jim Jim's my mentor and boss, and he gave me my my first shot, and it was kind mm -hmm. of this really crazy, you know, God thing, honestly, and. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I've told this story before, but like the way that I got into the industry was really peculiar. I, you know, sorry, this is like a weirdly religious story, but bear with me. <laughs> uh, I was, I was, I would, I, there was a Doctor Who uh, group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm a nerd. It was when Chris Eccleston took over Doctor Who and this guy was getting bootleg uh, copies from uh, England. And so we'd meet and, and we would watch it. And that's how I really got to meet Jim. And Jim was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to be a writer. And Jim's like, I'm a writer. I'm like, sure you are. And uh, and I, I remember letting him read something of mine. And he came in. He's like, this is crap. But like like the good kind of crap. You know, like, oh, thanks. I, thanks for your support, you know. And, um, and I've been out here for a long time, you know, busting my butt trying to make a go of it. And um doing a lot of assistant work, working at, you know, whatever. <clears throat> Anyways, I was at church one day and they give a sermon on the Moses and the burning bush. And I was like, I need a burning bush. <laughs> like I need something to <laughs> specifically tell me what I need to do. And uh, my wife's like, well, you should pray about it. I'm like, I don't know. Okay. Oh. You know, and I did. <laughs> and uh, because my wife knows all. And the next day I get a call from Jim and he goes, I know this is weird. But I was praying last night, and I feel like God wants me to be your mentor. And I want to put you on my show, but I need you to do this, this, and this. And I was like, okay. You know, and I, I kind of had to jump through hoops that he later told me he did just to see if I'd jump through hoops. And, uh -huh. um, and I got this job. And I turned in the script, and, uh, and I got these notes back. And they're really funny notes. It was like, uh, yeah, uh, Giancarlo wants to put uh you know like a like a, a a worm like a space worm or earthworm in this in this episode i was like what like what, <laughs> what do you mean a space worm and jim was giving me some really good advice because listen if if he wants hal jordan to have a talking mustache you're gonna write the best <laughs> talking mustache ever that's your job and i was like okay okay so i put the i put the worm in second episode i do script comes back and he go and s similar note I want to put some space sharks in here, like space sharks. Like, is this guy watching like nature channel? What's happening? So I write it in. And then I go watch the episodes when they come out, like two years later. And uh -huh. I'm like, darn it, if those things didn't need a worm, and that didn't need a space shark. <laughs> like there's something, like he's so visually minded and smart that he was probably like, you know, it needs this thing. Whatever this mm -hmm. thing is, it needs it. And he knew better. And that was my first taste of the, the, the reality of a collaborative medium Mm -hmm. Where you really have to trust the people involved in it. And when they say, hey, I, I feel like we need this thing, you need to look at that and see if that's true. And as a writer, especially at that level, you don't even have to see if it's true. You just go, you got do it. it. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, nice. But yeah, that's that's uh, that's how I got my start. In, and it was with Green Lantern, you know. And I had a pretty extensive collection of, it was John's and Tomasi's. It was like Green Lantern, Green Lantern Core were such mm -hmm. good companion pieces. Oh yeah, and I had, I love that those two at the same time was just really really cool, as it led up to you know all the 
the the different colored things and, oh. you know, it <laughs> expanded in this giant space opera but at the mm -hmm. time it was really cool i love guy gardner because i'm such a justice league international fan and um he was just such a jerk but i loved it <laughs> and i and i and seeing them in that series make mm -hmm. him a pacifist for as long as they did was in, <laughs> was it was just insane. It was just <laughs> insane. It's sort of like in Marvel when they when they took the Hulk out. He's at Planet Hulk for like a year or more, uh -huh. and I was like, I this is insane. Like, you know, like, <laughs> but with with with, with uh, Guy Gardner, it was just hilarious because he was gone. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he's, you know, he was such a nice guy for so long, and then he comes <laughs> back and he's a super jerk. And I'm like, this is this it was probably my two favorite covers of a comic book is the one with Guy or Lobo over Guy. And the next uh -huh. one is Guy over Lobo. And I'm like, that, that's it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he, he getting hit on the head. He's like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so good. And I remember reading, it was like, I don't know if it was the first couple issues, but when they see the rock, the red, the rocket reds, and he starts uh -huh. singing the Star Spangled Banner as he goes off, and he's just like wailing on. I'm like, <laughs> hell yeah, guy Gardner! You know, show them commies. <laughs> like I was, I was like, this is awesome. You know, Blue Beetle is Ted Cord's like, uh, where's Guy going? You know, it was just, it was just so funny and so weird, and I I love that. But <clears throat> Green Lantern, I'm mean, back to Green Lantern. It's like um, this is an interesting thing because they they you know told me that i was going to be off of the flash and then they asked me to, to take on hal jordan green lantern and mm. and they kind of had specific things they wanted to kind kind of adhere to in a way they like want them to be much more like on earth and and a couple other things uh and i be, again I'm like, yeah, but there's got to be a reason. You know, the DC nerd <laughs> brain is like, well, there's got to yeah. be a reason. He's in the <laughs> Earth. You know, I just must make sense within my continuity and my brain. <laughs> so I started like coming up with uh, what I think is the story, and I I said, hey, I think it should be this, and 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 Paul was very, um, you know, amenable to it. And then you have Zermanico, who who just everything he draws is amazing. So I think with the Green Lantern, the thing I guess I, I guess the thing I'm worried about and I'm excited about is that I, I it's monthly, so mm -hmm. I, this story is going to unfold. It's not going to be like, and this is why this is you know sector two eight one four is quarantined, mm -hmm. and so there's I'm worried about that. I'm worried I, I like I both need to have the patience to unravel <laughs> that slowly. But I'm also a comic book guy who's like, all right, all right, let's go. This is, you know, this is this is five bucks a book, and uh, we're six months in. I need answers. Like I, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like. It's been a year, and we don't know what's going on. Like that's not me. That's not what I want to do. I want to tell a story in as the length of time that I can, but not make it so long that people are upset at me, and uh, and so I can get on to other stories. Uh, get on to 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 fun stuff. Uh, um, I really enjoyed kind of finding the how that I want to write, and mm -hmm. he's very much like a cross between, you know, he's kind he's kind he's kind of Maverick, Han Solo, Captain mm -hmm. Kirk, you know, and he's he's very confident. And he's very like, uh, but he's also, I also don't think he's, I, I don't think he's a, a dick that everybody thinks he is, you know? And I actually think here's a guy who's led, you know, saved the universe, led, led soldiers into battle in a way. And also as with Wally experienced something really, really traumatic, but he has the ability to overcome great fear. And that's that's the that's the the singular thing I keep I keep going back to him. It's it, you know whereas Wally is very empathetic and gone through a lot of trauma. I think Hal Jordan is uh, maybe not as empathetic, but he's overcome a lot of trauma by sheer will, and mm -hmm. um, and that makes him stronger for it. And so I think he is unbelievably formidable. I still think he's a. I don't think he's like I said. I don't think he's a jerk. 
And I think sometimes that's how people write them mm -hmm. as a jerk. And I don't want that to be the case. I want them to be charming and nice and, you know, Don Johnson from Miami Vice or something. I don't know. Not, 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 I mean, just cool. You want to, you want him to be cool. You want him to be the guy that like, when he's talking to Carol, he's like, he's super confident about it. And not like, I mean, maybe my favorite movie is probably Big Trouble in Little China. So I'm not going to say he's Jack Burton level, but like he's that certain type of confidence where it's just like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is, it is Han Solo. Like I'm, I'm other men, you know, it's not, yeah. it's not kind of like, you, know, uh, you know, and, um, and he's experienced something that we're not going to know right away. And that is going to uh, be a cool thing that I think as fans that we get to uncover and, uh, and that will lead into greater mysteries. And then, and, and then what's cool thing about the book is even if you hate my issue, uh, you get to stick around for Philip Kennedy Johnson. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be one of my questions. I was like, are yeah. you in contact with, uh, with him? Yeah. So are you guys coordinating? You're like, Oh, are you going to um, use this? Or are you going to use this? So I've told Philip kind of what I'm doing and he has, he has what he's doing with John and his stuff is super cool. <laughs> it's one of those things I'm like, gosh, dang it. <laughs> you know? No, it's, it's really good. And, and more than that, um, as far as I've, I've, I've only met him briefly once and we've had some conversations and in, incredibly humble, incredibly nice. Uh, and so far everything's been really wonderful in terms of it's not, they're not like coordinated because he has a story he's telling with John, mm -hmm. but I do think, and I think what I want, and I think what fans want is at some point I would, you know, these things need to, they need to dip into each other. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's what the dawn of DCU is trying to do at its base level is have a concentrated focal point for each hero so that fans can jump on board. Um, mm -hmm. I think the last couple of years, and I, I don't, I don't want to lay the blame at like DC's fault, but <laughs> Warner Brothers has been like, blah, 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 you know, so I think there's been so many editorial changes and so many, like, you've seen the, the reports about the layoffs and it's like, mm -hmm. you know, there's a skeleton crew manning this big ship and people are trying to figure it out. And I have to give huge kudos to Josh Williamson because he really, um, you know, the dark crisis, I think, was was the result of him trying to pull He's Spider-Man and in, in, in Toby Maguire in front of that uh you know that yeah, subway that train. just pulling out <laughs> the train just like ah you know? I think there's some of that there and um and so I I feel like I think people are feeling that too is that with Action Comics number one and and what's happening with Nightwing and you know Titans and all that stuff there's this kind of like okay we're focusing on these things and we're focusing on these pillar characters. And then off of those pillar characters, depending on, you know, it all comes down to sales. You know, it's always funny to me. It's something that I, I talk about sounding like a fuddy-duddy, but it's true. Um, you know, because I come from the animation world. And I can't tell you how many times that people will lash out online about how, you know, why don't we have more movies that star this character, this character? And it's like, well, you didn't buy it mm -hmm. when we did mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And most of you pirate it, which is terrible. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I like I I don't I don't want to be the guy like, hey, you guys are stealing, but you're stealing. You know, it's like you're you're, you're you are contributing to the problem. Like mm -hmm. when I tell you Marvel Unlimited and DC Infinite are not that expensive, mm -mm. you know, like you could you that. could contribute <laughs> to the ability of these books that you love that no one reads like. <laughs> I, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I love this. Why did they cancel this? Because they're selling 10,000 copies. And, you know what I mean? Like, because all <laughs> you guys stole it. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's the example I always use. I'm like, you have to vote with your dollars and cents. I'm like, you, you know, if, if if like these companies knew, I mean, I was, I was using the example over at Marvel. It's like, you know, if they knew they were going to sell a million copies of it, they would give you Hulk in a tutu every month yes. if they thought they were going to sell a million copies. Yes. <laughs> and by the way, the, the difference between them canceling a, a book and them not canceling the book is so slim. Oh, really? It's so like you're talking like a thousand, two thousand copies of a comic, and it's just like I, I, 
I, I kind of, I understand why they don't do this, but you kind of wish they would tell you how much each is selling so that you could sit there and go crap, 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 crap. You know, they're going <laughs> to they're gonna cancel this thing and we need to, we need to get people to buy it. Um, because, because that's, that's really, I think that's the math. That's the math mm -hmm. of all these things. It's like, okay, this isn't selling as much as we want, or we know what happens when it drops below this. It means that the book is on its way out and we have to start planning mm -hmm. accordingly. Um, yeah. and again, not my toys, uh, big business, et cetera, but it happens with animation too. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. why don't you guys do anything besides Batman? And so, well, because every time we do, uh, you know, no one buys it, you know, <laughs> it's like, why do you think there's 12 Batman books out? <laughs> I, I agree. It's weird, but it is. Where it is. So uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to ask you a, I'm going to ask you a yes or no question. You I can ask me a question anything. you want. <laughs> I'll, I'm, I'm I'm savvy. Let's do this. You might not be able to answer okay. it, but yes. D DC nerd brain. Yep. At at the end of Jeffrey Thorne's run. Yep. There are no guardians. Yep. There's no Malthusians. There's no controllers, and yet Sector Two Eight One Four is quarantined by the guardians. Yeah. The question is. Will that be explained? I would bet this continuity horror is going to answer some of these <laughs> questions eventually. Uh, uh, now it will. No. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, like what you just told me, there's a certain amount of me trying to trying to figure out what the continuity is, even in the Flash. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I get, I get varying answers. So, uh, <laughs> well, it's kind of hard too, because there has been the green lantern series for like a year now. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. But what you said is like, that's the type of thing that gets me thinking, you know, yeah. and, and it gets me going like, okay, this is interesting. Like, like I want to, I, I, it's exactly what I said. I don't like the holes. I want mm -hmm. to make sure that, that things are filled in. And I also don't want to step on other creators' exactly. story yeah. either, mm -hmm. you know, um, because I think that Thorne probably had a, a, a bigger story that he was trying to tell. And mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's those are also conversations. It's like, oh, OK, I got to fill this in somehow, but I also mm -hmm. don't want to step on somebody's toes. And uh, listen, I'm still wondering what happened at the end of Millennium. When the Zamorans, <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> disappeared, and there were these well, characters that were supposed to be really important, <laughs> like you know, like there's stuff <laughs> that's still lingering. Um, uh, we're uh, so Phil and I do uh, Sector Two Eight One Four podcast, and we're rereading Green Lantern from 1990 up. Holy cow! And yeah, we're pretty so much we're up to. Yeah, we're up to what, like one sixty right now. So right. Yeah, we're like we at, the end of, uh, at the end of Judd Winnick's. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And the Zamarans show up, and we're like, "Hey, what happened with this?" Because Nerd Brain, we're like, yeah. well, "They came back, but then where are they? We don't see them again until yeah. you know, Rebirth." So, uh, yeah, I, I'm with exactly. you, man. Exactly. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That never mind. That that brings up a big question. All right, are I don't know if you can answer this or not, but are we going to see my favorite Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner? Uh, uh, not not immediately not right for away. not for me right now. I got so much of the the when is Kyle going to hang out with Wally? Uh, oh yeah, and and I very early on like, hey, can Kyle hang out with Wally? And they're like, no. <laughs> you know? like, really? Oh. It's like fine. You know, there there's, yeah, not yet, not yet. But that's that's again, that's that's what I'm sorting out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I because I also want people to follow it. You know, I also uh -huh. want people to understand what's going oh, on, and I. And this isn't being mean, but I don't think any. But I don't think there's a lust for uh, the con <laughs> that particular aspect of nerddom yeah. with some people as yeah. much as like I want everything to make sense. Like you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like uh, it, 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 Amanda Waller's back. I'm like, wait, I don't understand. She's trapped in Earth three. Like you know, yeah. like, I, I want to know. You know, I'm typing Josh. Like, what happened? You tell me what happened right now. You know. <laughs> Okay, so so I don't know if you can answer this either, but you, you said Hal's going to be, you know, it's going it's to be a lot on Earth. So are yeah. we just going to see Hal in your stories? I know Philip's going to have uh, John Stewart, but are we just going to see mostly Hal yeah. as Green Lantern? Hal? Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank well, I mean, you have so you have so many great characters. You know, the, just the the Earth Lanterns. You know, you've yeah. got 
the classics with, you know, Hal and Guy and John and then yep. Kyle, the newer ones with Jessica and Simon. Yeah. And then, you know, really, you know, Joe is really interesting from Far Sector, you know, which yep. is just from, you know, a couple of years ago. And that's just the the Earth Lanterns, you know, and then you've got Kilowog, who's great. You've got Salak. You've got all of these yep. great alien characters that have been, you know, in the book since even before I was born. A long time ago, okay. So, I mean, you've got such a it's a huge such a giant box of toys, right? You know, <laughs> and, and and maybe I I'm I don't and we're gonna see how it plays out. But I mean, the fact is, two eight one four is quarantine in this particular thing, so those Earth lanterns aren't gonna be there, mm -hmm. and uh, and it presents some unique problems. And it's also like, well, why is Hal there, and why does mm -hmm. how does Hal have a ring? Because mm -hmm. it's quarantine. You're not allowed to have a Green Lantern there. And uh, and I also want to talk about why there's so many Green Lanterns in Sector 2814, the problem problem child of all sectors. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, um, and I think what's great is what John has going or what uh, Philip has going on and what I think some of the backup issues are going to talk about uh, as like other characters and doing other things. You know, mm -hmm. You know, what happens when the police says, okay, we can't, patrol that area, you know, so we're going to move you over here. We're going to do, have you do this or do that. Um, that's going to be a piece of it. I, th I think it's going to be interesting. And with how, um, again, there's a mystery about it all and mm -hmm. stuff that has led to this moment. And I just didn't want to, they, you know, they really wanted to be kind of earthbound, but I really wanted to be earthbound wrapped in a mystery. And that's part of his character journey too. It's like, he's been gone for a long time. Oh yeah. And the woman that he loves, you know, has moved on in a way. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like, because, because I'm not waiting around for you, you know, like that, that, <laughs> that's the kind of thing. And, and I think everybody kind of understands that. And that's, that's the push and pull of that relationship a little bit. And it, mm -hmm. I mean, listen, it's very, soapy uh in terms <laughs> of like what especially what uh what's fun is because i i am absolutely like you know it's a miracle that my wife married me you know what i mean like it's like i am the worst <laughs> yeah it's like she said she talked to me like it's you know it's, like, it's, it was a miracle thing so it's kind of fun to write somebody and maybe i'm writing them terribly but it's fun to write somebody that's absolutely confident in that arena too you know because it's like you know he's super confident he's he's doing the things that i wish i could be super confident yeah. i'm not i'm not intimidated by blah 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 but he is because it's it's this woman that that he has such history with and mm -hmm. um and so again it's me digging in and finding out so much about what's going on in the green lantern universe but also tying it to a, a bigger mystery and um the cool thing i think the way that we're constructing the series is not not only are you going to get some soapy stuff but Zermanic was so good at the action stuff and how beautiful it is. And then I really have in mind that I don't want to just do constructs. It's like, oh, he does a bow and arrow, you know, and he does a boxing <laughs> glove. It's like, I'm really, and I know people have done it better than I have, but I'm really trying hard to, to have him use constructs in a, a unique way. Mm -hmm. And also him using his powers, like certain powers that he's had in the past that maybe they don't talk about much anymore um sort of you'll have to see because it's really <laughs> it's really like well, i don't know we'll see <laughs> okay well here's a here's a, a philosophy question for you okay um the core has always been presented as you know policemen yes i, I feel like they were m kind of mirroring america a bit and became a bit more militarized sure you know, in the past is, is, I mean, I, I know there's still mileage in that metaphor as a policeman, but do they need to move? Do you, do you feel like they need to move beyond that? And maybe police isn't the best thing for them to be after, you know, the years that we've just lived through at some point. I think that's an interesting philosophical question. I, I also think it's interesting because Hal didn't join up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he was chosen mm -hmm. 
and he has a military background depending on which continuity you're dealing with but he does have a military background um and i think the greater good of you know patrolling the universe and doing good is is great like that's great mm -hmm. but you're also talking about unelected bureaucrats that are meddling and blah 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 blah. you know yeah. <laughs> so there's the superman of it right like why don't they just all go quest for peace and start on you know uh <laughs> like it, you know where's the prime directive in this scenario I uh -huh. think I think there's some of that. I think I I think what I'm playing with Hal in terms of I think one of the things that I've caught on about Hal that I really love is that he isn't just I'll take orders and do what you want. Mm -hmm. He's definitely a little more cantankerous than that because he's seen so much too. Mm -hmm. As far as the philosoph philosophy of the core, it's hard because I I'm I'm thinking more earthbound right now. And mm -hmm. I know at some point I'm going to be thinking about um, the core and I'm in, in a, in a different sense because I, you know, I'm not one of those people. I do think that, you know, police are, are a valuable, important aspect, but mm -hmm. there's also regulations and all sorts of other things involved in that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, it's it's a funny thing because it's also it's also just like somebody put that together. Like, I mean, it it makes real sense at a high level. It's like, oh yeah, they're police. They're the police. Exactly. The place. Mm -hmm. It's a um, really easy metaphor, right? But it's like, but what are they? Are they? They're not ticketing people for parking. You know, it's yeah. like <laughs> it's really for for bigger issues. And who signs on for that? And who doesn't sign on for that? Um, I always think about it like, man, like who joined the Federation of Planets? Like, is it some people are just like, hey, we want to be under the Guardians uh, rule rather than, nope, you're part of it. Sector, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you're in. You know, the way we don't want to get in. You know, I don't know. I think all of that is interesting stuff to talk about. But um, but I also think at its best is when the, the people that are part of the core are doing this for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Um but I'm also trying to do something different in terms of my run because all, all the colored lanterns and all the emotional spectrum and all of the blackest night and all that stuff, that's been done. Mm -hmm. I think I would be really stupid to try and part two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like do that. I think I have to go in a much more subtle uh, direction. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be really fun to have a Green Lantern on Earth that will, um, hopefully as we go along, we'll start interacting with superheroes and start interacting with the DC universe at large. There's been so much of Green Lantern just interacting with space yeah. aliens and all that yeah. stuff. It's going to be really fun to see, you know, him clock Gorilla Grodd or something. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. come down and be like, oh, it's when's the last time we saw Green Lantern versus, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, on on, mm -hmm. on Earth. I think that's going to be kind of neat. Well, that was gonna be, that was going to be my next question. I was gonna be like, since Hal's going to be so uh, down on Earth, are we going to see a bunch of uh, old school villains or some new villains? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's that's what that's my intention. I also, yeah, I it, it, there's a little bit of like a discussion between me and Paul about like, oh, I want to bring this. He's like, I don't want that. And I'm like, oh, you know, like there's a little <laughs> bit of that, like that, like I want it to be this. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I understand that, but we also have to have some of this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's all couched in that, like, I got to get to this because I don't want people to leave. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know? So hopefully there's enough comedy and, and romance and adventure that people will keep reading to find out what's mm -hmm. happening in the mystery. Um, but yeah, those are the worries as, as, you know, as a writer, you're like, I, I do it because I love it and I'm writing it and I'm having so much fun doing it. And then you send it out and you're like, I hope people, I don't know. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's what the flash has been literally every time I've turned in a flash. I'm like, I, I just don't know if anybody will like this. And um, I, at one point I was at Comic-Con. <laughs> it was with the, it was with the, the 2022 annual. And, uh, and one of the editors came up there like, I don't know what you're doing, man. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I like, got me either, man. And he's like, he's like, you know, in this entire annual, you don't have the flash be the flash. I'm like, huh, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> like, like, I was like, you're not wrong. You know, you're not wrong. I don't know. So, so there's an element of like, 
I just see something. I'm very excited about it. I write it and you put it out there and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work and you just kind of hope for the best. And I just, like I said, I, I've, I've been very fortunate because the fans haven't turned on me yet. <laughs> you know, not yet. Yet. It'll happen. But I just, right now. Hey, I told you, I enjoyed the run. And while we've been talking, one of our friends, uh, Russell, left a comment, said, have wow. absolutely loved Jeremy's flash run. Big shoes to fill after Williamson, but Jeremy definitely succeeded. So wow. That's kind. I mean, listen, Williamson, obviously, Josh, he did that forever. And then there was this gap between him and then when I picked up and um, yeah, man, I, I mean, he's been so kind and such a cheerleader for me and uh, talk about a guy who added so many toys to the toy box. Oh my gosh. And it was interesting to go back and look at his run and just be thinking about, Oh man, he's so smart in so, so many ways that he, he made every few issues an event, a flash event. And it was such a, and I'm sitting here with stupid wrestlers, you know, <laughs> 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 He's on a clips of fighting gym. You know, it's like, what is what's happening? <laughs> like Dr. Fate is like, look behind you, turn the book upside down. Like a complete lunatic. He's working for Mr. Terrific. <laughs> I, know, I know. Listen, Mr. Terrific is one of those things where like that was such a unique, that was such a surprise to me. I we've been going on forever. I know I gotta no, no, good, but, no. <laughs> but I wanted to get Ted Cord because I'm such a blue beetle. Oh. Fan. And they were like, you cannot have Ted Cord. You know, they're doing a blue and gold book. And I was like, okay, who can I have? You know, and it was like, oh, you can have Mr. Terrific. And I was like, oh, the Vulcan guy? You know, like in my head, he was always so <laughs> serious and blah, 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 blah. And so that was the thing where it was like, I've started, I've had so much fun with Mr. Terrific in my mind, transforming him into Buckaroo Banzai, like the, but you know, like, <laughs> and the fact that he owns like a potato chip factory and like, you know, he has his own streaming network. Like, I like, like, it's just like, he has, I have a list. I have a running list on my desktop of like all the different things that he owns that feeds into his empire of like labs. And, and, and then he's just like super cool. So when he comes in to the Jiffy Lube that he owns, you know, the Jiffy Lube and he's like, you're fired, Wally. You know, it's like, I got a better job for you and we have free lunch. You know, it's like all that <laughs> stuff to me is like hilarious. And like it made it, Michael, like it was just a weird thing where I'm suddenly like, oh my gosh, I'm, I really like Mr. Terrific now where I didn't think, <laughs> I, I didn't really know him and I didn't really like him beforehand. Mm -hmm. But as I kept writing him and giving a little bit of like, uh, just, just funny little little things and you would see him in the background you would see wally eating like terrifo chips or whatever like <laughs> you know, the cereal that's the terrific stuff and and then it's the same thing with the kids like i was like oh i don't know i'm one of those guys if i see kids in a movie i'm like Ugh, you know yeah and then it's like suddenly i'm writing them and i'm like uh i'm trying to think when i when it was really funny to me uh obviously i one of my my favorite is that I wrote an issue with my daughter and it's the one mm -hmm. where they go to the um, daddy daughter dance. Oh, and my yeah. daughter and I had just mm -hmm. gone to a daddy daughter dance and, yeah. and they were supposed to credit her on the book, but legally they couldn't and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, yeah. um, but my daughter had drawn all the, all the villains, all the nightmares and the, and we sent those <laughs> in and the, the artist, Duce, uh, Christian Duce, like he like did them all. It was such an amazing experience with my daughter. Wow. And I was like, oh my gosh, she, the way I'm writing her is obviously a lot like my, my oldest daughter. And mm -hmm. then, and then after that, <laughs> you know, I was still like, oh, I, I love her. She's funny. But then when I, when I was writing Jay and his action log, I was like, oh no, I fall in love with these kids in a way that is so <laughs> funny to me because, and then added in, you know, Animal Man's daughter. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then it was like Maxine. And then I was just like, this is hilarious. Like, they, like, and, and, and then it's like, who, who, who remembers Maxine? And the people are like, we do. And then I was like, oh crap. And then it was like, oh, how did she uh, get her powers back? And I'm like, now I know in my head how I think about that. <laughs> At the time, I was like, she she doesn't have powers anymore. Like, you know, I'm like, oh, shoot, you know? <laughs> but that, to me, is super fun. That, those are like storytelling moments because, like, Jay not having his powers because um, have sharing them with Irie hurts him. Mm -hmm. That became such a cool story point that led to the surge that we had given Wally 
from the first arc that were just like, what are we doing with this thing? And the Spectre's like, you got to give it to your son. Like, hello. You know, you, and, and so then it all, it all kind of worked in a cool way. And it just, and, and I, I love that. I love, sometimes you just throw it out there and you're like, I hope this makes sense. And then you try to make it make sense. So, <laughs> so you're, uh, you, you said, you know, you're, you're trying to get comfortable writing how you're, you know, number one comes out in May. Yeah. I assume you're probably up to number three or four on scripting. How, how, how's it feeling so far? So, um, Here's where I'm I'm trying to figure out what has been announced and not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the first, I will tell you, the first two issues are done. Mm -hmm. And I really like where it's headed. I'm being mm -hmm. so careful. Um, <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying it in terms of I really like who Hal is and I think that he's he's more thoughtful than I thought he would be and also I think he's owning up to you know the fact that he left home for so long mm -hmm. and like what does that mean and 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 did he might make the right decision to come back you know and that's 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 like one of those things like uh, you move back to your hometown like wow should i have done this i don't know if i should have done this <laughs> up there i was somebody down here i'm a schlub with 13 dollars in his checking account you know it, it's uh <laughs> I, it's it's a question but but how is has the the most willpower so it's like he's not gonna sit there and like cry about it you know what I mean? He's that guy that's like, uh, he's not a maudlin guy. He's more, you know, if he wants to do something, he's going to do it because that's who he is. But I think he has to have the, the right reason to do it. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Um, I can't tell you enough how Zermanico's artwork is just, you know, we're not worthy, we're not worthy type thing. And I, I love the fact that he gives so much, like, Hey, let's do it this way. Or can I do this? And and he can do those real subtle moments, and he can do the the romance and the comedy because he knows how to do facial features, and he gets what I'm doing in that regard. And then when you when you play that as like, oh, here's your soap opera drama, or whatever, and it leads into the, these big like action moments, and you see them. Um, it's actually Jeff said to me when uh, because when we saw Zermanico doing Flashpoint Beyond, it was like everything he sent us was so incredible. And so when when Jeff found out that I was doing Green Lantern, he was just such a big cheerleader, like, "Oh yeah, yeah, Jeremy, yeah, that's great," you know. <laughs> and um, and he said, "Who's your artist?" I go, "Zermanico." He's like, "Oh my gosh, man!" And he was very much like, "Think about think about low lower panel count because he's so good. Think about letting him sing." You know, let them let them have bigger palettes to to draw and do mm -hmm. stuff. So I'm trying. But I'm also a wordy <laughs> dude, so you know it's a, <laughs> it's a catch twenty two. But well, is is this a uh, you've got a backup story? Is it a twenty page, twenty two page, twenty two uh, page, twenty two page? Oh, All right, awesome. Answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then um, I'm not I don't know backup eight or ten, right? I I don't know mm -hmm. exactly something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what they yeah. put in. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, I mean, these are little thick, thick guys, thick boys. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like I said, um, and then obviously we've got all this other stuff coming out in DC and then I've got another cool DC announcement some point. <laughs> oh, see, you're doing a good job. That's when they start throwing 20 books at you. Oh, oh I wish, <laughs> I wish. Listen, I told him, I was like, you give me, give me, give me it all. I'm like, I'll, I'll write anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm literally that guy. It doesn't matter what they want to write. And the funny thing is, it's still not like my bread and butter. The things that I really love, one of the things I love about DC Comics, and it was one of the reasons that I got uh, Batman Soul of the Dragon, the movie I did with Bruce Timm, and um, the Mortal Kombat movies, the animated movies, were was because I would not shut up about uh, martial arts, but specifically DC martial arts. Okay. And I love DC martial arts. I love there you know dixon kind of started off gail simone picked it up and they and there's such a cool rich 
just awesome characters where whether it's oh sensei or bronze tiger richard dragon or all those things um and then you know i'm a huge cassandra kane fan and it's uh, like i would love to get my hands on that toy box because um i love that stuff you know nice. uh, was, he's gonna he, next six months he's gonna be he announced he's writing a bat book kids oh my God. <laughs> i mean they they are not stupid enough to let me into that arena. I'd be like, <laughs> you can't get me out now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's so funny. And I but but the other the other piece of it, the thing I didn't know I wanted, and that the, the thing that I didn't know that I'm excited that I love as much as I do. But I of course I love it because I love Young Justice. Mm -hmm. I love when Jeff was writing. I love when when Peter David was writing it. I love younger superheroes, obviously, because I've been building out those characters. And I announced on my Twitter that issue 797, we're going to have uh, super sons on that, in that issue. And, oh. and, and I'm like, I'm, I like desperately want younger superheroes because they, they don't exist really anymore. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, I would love to do some, some kid centric thing too, because I, I just, I have, I find it hilarious. And when I did the super <laughs> sons movie, I had such a fun time writing that super sons movie. I was like, Oh my gosh, I wish I could, I could write more kid stuff. Okay. Next question. What is the going bribe to get drawn into an issue of green lantern? With, uh, <laughs> with, us, meeting, with us meeting Hal Jordan. I, you know what's funny is I have an idea for fans that is going to be kind of, my version of the no prize if i can if i can get it off the ground and if uh if i last long enough <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> like if the book lasts long enough then i will implement it you know uh, but but i i have to get i have to get to that uh, that might be uh, a good backup rather than just sticking people in <laughs> oh here's a page from the book of oa kids yeah exactly um well, if uh, look, looking forward. If if you're on Green Lantern for a year or two yeah. years or five yeah. years, what you know, you're looking at it from the beginning now. What what do you feel like will be a successful run for you? I think people liking Hal Jordan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean serious. I mean seriously, it's a weird. It's a weird thing where like people people love their Green Lanterns. I think that's great, mm -hmm. but I think Hal has like a weird shadow over him, and um, some of that is just because of the parallax thing. Even though that's been explained, um, but there's a certain element of like, um, I don't think he at the time that he was written, he was a little bit of a cipher for whoever was reading him, and he was a little bit larger. He was just great. Oh yeah, yeah this, that, yeah. and the other. And he comes back, and he's rough and tumble and all that stuff. And it's like, but I, I actually want people to like him as a person. And that to me would be successful. It's like, oh, I really like Hal now, rather than ugh, Hal. You know, it's like, you know, there's a little. I mean, there's a little of that, right? There's a little bit yeah. of people like I like Hal because, uh, you know, he, he's the greatest Green Lantern. It's like, yeah, I get that. But like, if you try to nail them down on his on his on his personality and stuff, it's harder. It's harder to to nail down. And I I want people to really like him as a character, like really like him as a superhero. I mean, like, oh, I remember that time that Hal did this thing. And he saved these people and he did this and it's yeah. like, yeah, he's super cool, you know, because sometimes he becomes a butt of a joke where there's like all-star Batman. I think it was a great gag where they painted that entire room gold and they're like making fun of him. And you're like, oh man, that's messed up, you know? And it's like, uh, they do that sometimes, but I, his secret power is that like, uh, you know, he, he, the ring didn't come to Batman, you know what I mean? Like the ring didn't come to him. And he's he's been out there saving the earth before it even gets to the earth. Like you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so the, I mean, he's been his his vision is so much bigger than um, than I think some other people. So now he, now he has to shrink that vision a little bit and look at what are, what's around him and remember what he was fighting for it, to begin with. Um, and, and that was something like in the Flash that I really want to make apparent that that. Wally was the boots on the ground, but Wally wasn't. Wally saw it all from the, the the ground level, and that became that became a really important facet to who the Flash was in terms of the the world. So where where's Green Lantern, you know, fit into that? 
And um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Cool. Very cool. All right. I think I think we're gonna let this man go. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, I, we've enjoyed this. Thank you. Oh yeah. If you, I mean, if you want to come back when Green Lantern One comes out, or if you want to get a couple issues deep, or hell, I'll talk Flash Eight Hundred. I know. <laughs> well, let's get let's get further down the line. We got a I, I got a, I got a list, but you guys are I think the first one I've talked to since uh, since I've you know since I've taken over. I mean, so nice. We'll see. Saying, we'll yeah, see. Yeah. I'll get a I, scorecard. I, 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 yeah, I mean, you're welcome to come back because, like you said, I mean, we gotta, you know, we gotta get these people to start spending their money on these. That's books, right. So. That's right. Yeah. You're deaf. <laughs> Let's do it. Thank all you right. so much. All right. One more thing before. Yeah. All right. Before Lil, my other co-host, kills me, can I get a uh, drop of you saying this is Jeremy Adams and you are listening to the Capes of Lunatics podcast? Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. This is Jeremy Adams, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Yes. Perfect. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. I know mm-hmm. we're going to enjoy uh, how Jor- what you have in store for how Jordan the Flash is already great. So mm-hmm. thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you.